Hi, in this video tutorial we'll go over how to best get started with Climate Studio for Grasshopper. Um, you see here I have my Rhino Cat window on the left hand side and I have my Grasshopper canvas on the right hand side and I already navigated to the Climate Studio tab in Grasshopper and the best way to get started is using this workflow templates component that you find on the left hand side. It will also reveal the version number if you zoom in close and we'll have the select button. If you click it, then you'll be presented with a series of workflow templates that are useful, such as um, how do you add new materials and constructions to the library? How do you create your own custom schedules? Um, and then there's an energy modeling section that goes from kind of very advanced um, workflows to simple shoebox analyses and solar simulations, such as PV simulations, and then other utilities that are maybe handy like weather analysis and like shading mask development and so forth. So just to get started I want to begin with the shoebox model. This is kind of the simplest single zone energy modeling setup that I can think of. So let's click that and then you'll see this workflow component basically automatically populates the entire grasp of a canvas with, um, with uh, a template workflow. Um, we'll walk through it step by step in a second, but just before we start, um, you see there is uh, internalized geometry. This geometry was modeled in meters, so if you want to follow along, make sure that your um, Rhino settings are also set to meters. Um, if you model your own geometry, you can model in any um, unit as you like, and Axim will or Climate Studio will automatically convert that um, moving forward. So you see um, this, this template workflow, and I'm going to expand this a little bit. There's a single zone um, with a window and then a shading device. And you see the, how the geometry is kind of associated here um, to these uh, elements. And as you see also, there's two boundary condition set setups here and the shading device down at the bottom. So the first thing really is kind of this is a closed volume, and this is a B-Rep um, um, parameter that is um, provided to the zone component and under settings here you'll find kind of all of the internal um, internal setup that uh, turns this simple volume into a zone. There's, there's several kind of parameters that we'll go over in different uh, tutorials um, and cover them step by step as you see here uh, and certain assumptions that will go into this as well as um, for the window there's again settings associated with it that turn the simple geometry into a window. And then we, s we provide um, boundary conditions for the ground. So this zone is kind of sitting on the ground and we want to model ground contact. This is how we would do this. And then one of these walls we want to model as uh, an adiabatic surface. And then lastly, we want to provide the shading system uh, as a kind of static shading geometry. This is all bundled in this networker component that turns this um, this kind of setup into a thermal model that we can then pass on to a simulation engine. In this case, this is going to run an energy model using Energy Plus in the background. So if I click on Run Analysis, then you'll see this um, little window pop up and it will run through the simulation. And if everything works fine, then um, this is going to pass out a model again and we'll use this component to bring in uh, some of the results. So as you see, this uh, component provides some outputs such as EUI uh, in kilowatt hours per meter squared per year. It also comp computes a baseline, which is based on the AIA site EUI baseline guidelines that the AIA has published. Um, it reports uh, CO2 emissions. It reports an estimated cost, and it reports the floor area of your building, as well as kind of the raw data that, that is used to plot um, this EUI breakdown here. So um, you see you can use kind of these simple text panels to summarize um, the zone results um, but you can also look at the monthly breakdown and if you switch through the modes you can kind of turn this graphing tool um, to report um, energy use which is not normalized um, by floor area or you can also look at the energy balance that gives you a hint on kind of where the energy and how the energy flows in the buildings. You see here um, the biggest, uh, sig most significant losses in this zone come from mechanical ventilation as well as infiltration. And then 
there's uh, heat loss through the envelope right here and then heat loss through the window. And then we see some internal gains from equipment, from people and from lighting as well as some solar gains but they're really small. And then to balance this all out the rest has to be provided by the system which is shown here in gray. So this is a really good um, way to get started and to explore the program further so we uh, with a few clicks we can kind of set up a model and run it and then we can um, take, take some more time to go into these settings and play with them and see how they change.